Welcome back everyone! With only one preseason game left, there is a lot of debate about what should be done with, or who should be given the final spot on the Lakers roster. There are a number of ways they could go about filling it, and multiple players they could fill it with, but I doubt they'll find one player alone who fits every need that they have. Right now, they have a need for more 3 point shooting, a bigger wing defender, and more small forward depth in general, all of which can typically not be found for cheap. And for a team like the Lakers who are deep in the luxury tax, even adding one more minimum level contract would be very expensive. And the longer they wait, the more that price will go down. On the flip side though, they might not be able to hold out for much longer. They already are dealing with injuries to not one, but two of their wing players, with both Troy Brown Jr. and Juan Toscano Anderson recovering from back injuries. And with that in mind, many are calling for Mo Harkless to be brought in, a veteran wing defender who is still only 29. On the other hand though, others would prefer Matt Ryan, who has shown promising 3-point shooting ability throughout training camp. And then there are those who don't want either of them, and would much rather prefer a different option. So in today's video, we'll discuss what would be their best option, and the pros and cons to each of them. Before we do that though, if you are planning to make bets on the Lakers opening night game, then be sure to check out Prize Picks. They have a great promotion going on for opening night, and you can make a bet on Steph Curry dropping at least 0.5 points, or in other words, dropping one point or more against the Lakers. If you are interested in checking that out, then be sure to click the link on the screen and use code JSM when signing up. Without further ado though, let's begin by talking about the argument for signing Matt Ryan. He may have come back down to earth after dropping 20 points and knocking down 6 3 point shots back on Sunday, but there is still an argument to be made for him. For one, Matt Ryan can do something that no one else in their team currently can, with that being the ability to demand attention from beyond the arc and with or without the ball in his hands. The opposing team cannot afford to lose track of him, and they always need to be aware where he's at, which can provide value even without Matt Ryan knocking down shots. And as we found out, they cannot routinely get that from Cole Swider, nor can they be sure that Swider will be comfortable in that role during his rookie year. And I would argue that Matt Ryan is quicker, and a bit more athletic compared to him as well, which allows him to knock down shots on the move and get a bit more elevation while shooting. Again, I would have liked to see him build off his strong performance on Sunday, but I'm confident in him nonetheless. However, you can definitely make an argument against Matt Ryan too, with that primarily having to do with his ability to play defense. Up until this point, Matt Ryan has not shown the ability to be a good defender, neither in the NBA nor in the G League either. Now, I would not call him an outright liability on defense, as I do believe he is athletic enough to be average at the very least, but he definitely has some work to do. And with the Lakers not having very many wing defenders, Matt Ryan would not be helping with that. They cannot rely on him to take on difficult matchups, he would simply be on the court to provide 3 point shooting. And with that in mind, they definitely have an ultimatum here. On one hand, they need 3 point shooting. But on the other hand, they could also use another wing defender. And unfortunately, that is something that Matt Ryan is not, but they might be able to get that in Mo Harkless, who is pretty much the polar opposite compared to Matt Ryan. I mean, they are both combo forwards who are roughly the same height, but that is where the comparisons end. Rather than being a wing player known for 3 point shooting and lacking defense, Mo Harkless is widely known for his defense and then inability to provide reliable 3 point shooting. In fact, he's pretty much made a career out of playing defense, a long, lanky defender who can defend 3 or even 4 positions on the court, Harkless can be a very valuable defensive asset. And with him being only 29, there is definitely reason to believe they'll continue for a bit longer, which might be enough for a team like the Lakers to bring him in. Like I referred to before, they are dealing with injuries to both JTA and Troy Brown Jr. And although neither of them are long term problems, it does show what one injury alone can do to their wing depth. And Mo Harkless would be able to help with that. They wouldn't need him to fill a big role, but he could be there to provide around 10 to 15 minutes per game and then fill in whenever needed. 
Although, much like Matt Ryan, he would not be feeling every need that they currently have, as he would contribute to their 3 point shooting problem rather than help with it. You never really know what you're going to get with Mo. One night he might knock down a couple threes, but then following that, he might not make another one throughout the entire week. He's shown the ability to knock down threes at times, and he shot fairly well from the corner throughout the past 5 years, but he would definitely not be the solution to their 3 point shooting problem. And with that being said, which of them would be the better option? Would they be better off going with a 3 point shooter like Matt Ryan, or with a wing defender like Mo Harkless? Along with that, what kind of contract should be given to them if they do sign one of them? They have the option between giving a two-way contract to Matt Ryan, a non-guaranteed deal to either of them, or a partially to fully guaranteed deal to them as well. And that is where I would give the slight edge to Matt Ryan. I like Scottie Pippen Jr., but they might be better off waiving him and then giving that spot to Matt Ryan. He would qualify for a two-way contract due to having below 5 years of NBA experience, which cannot be said for Mo Harkless. In order to sign him, they would have to give him an official spot on their 15-man roster, and although that could come through a non-guaranteed contract, that might not be something they are willing to do. Now, you can definitely make an argument for either of them, as they each feel a completely different need, but I imagine the more likely option would be Matt Ryan. He's already a part of their team, and they've gotten a first-hand look at him too. And even though they've had rumored interest in Mo Harkless before, that does not mean they are interested in him right now. I mean, I would not be mad if they did, but it's not looking like they do at the moment. And with that in mind, the more likely option would have to be Matt Ryan. If not for one of them though, is there anyone else even worth considering? And well, the only one that I would mention would have to be Gary Clark. He is a better defender than Matt Ryan, and a better 3 point shooter than Mo Harkless. Not that he is a great 3 point shooter by any means, but he did shoot 40% from 3 last season. And with him being able to defend 1 through 4, I would not be opposed to giving him an opportunity. Unfortunately though, he is no longer eligible for a two way contract. Much like Mo Harkless, they would have to sign him to a standard NBA contract. And again, I'm not sure if they would be willing to do that. To wrap everything up here though, between Matt Ryan and Mo Harkless, there are definite pros and cons to each of them, with Matt Ryan being a good 3 point shooter but poor defender, and then Harkless being a good defender but below average 3 point shooter. And with that being said, what do you guys think? Who would you go with for their final spot? Would you go with Matt Ryan, Mo Harkless, or maybe a guy like Gary Clark instead? Let me know your thoughts by commenting down below and we can talk about it there. That will do it for this video though. Big thank you to those of you who took the time to watch until the end of this video, and until the end of all of my videos in general. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and turn on notifications to get notified right away when I drop a new video. But as always, thank you for watching and have a great day.